Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Santiago, as Heli said. I'm the creative technologist at the Legacy Factory. Uh, I'm now also the director of the Realities team. It's a team dedicated mostly for AR, VR, and metaverse experience. So we are deeply involved in you know, everything we are doing right now with metaverse and AR uh, universe. So uh, I have a little presentation for, for you maybe to know how was the process to create the templates and how we, we deal and create that. So I will share screen it quickly. Give me, it's just a couple of minutes. Give me one second. Okay, can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay, see great. Yes. Great. Uh, okay, my name is Santiago Inglés. I'm from Latin America. We are based in Europe, but we have office in uh, United States, uh, Puerto Rico, Colombia. So we are working everywhere. Um, when we were approached, well, but like ship about doing uh, the templates, we we start kicking off a, a project that was kind of amazing and also with a lot of pressure we had a, a few time few, a, a little time to do the, the project so we get the idea of creating a examples project for the, the lightship the new version was coming on the 2.0 so we were toying with the idea of creating simple digital package um to show, showcase the features but also welcome new users the idea was to uh, get a more approachable uh, way of working with Lightship features. In that, we create a team between Lightship and the Letter Factory, and we start working with Amanda, Haley, Blackstone, and our team, Anna, Marcelo, and everyone starts thinking about that. And the first thing we do is our research, but we don't like to do research. We want to play around a little bit with the technology, and we did a, a lot of tests, a lot of workarounds uh, and things. And we let us try and fail early. So we know what we can do and we can't do. Then we play with different approaches, how to deal with the technology, how to target the audience and everything. Then improve the user experience. We want to, the users to have a welcoming experience in the, in the technology and also study the first contact with technology. We were in the same uh, process you are right now, dealing with the first time with Lightship. So in that moment, we take note and we see what works, what doesn't work, uh, and uh, start building a knowledge around that. Then we, we also want to find this, the essence of the templates, each one of them, uh, what's the, the core content of, of, of the template. But then we start, what if? No, uh, we start the process of what if the, we don't have only a template, we have a, create a generator of templates. What if that generator has a, a UI? What if that UI is user-friendly? And that becomes a hub on the, the Lightship hub. So the first part and the, the core element of the templates are the factory. The factory is a system that creates the templates that give us the possibility to create a lot of templates around uh, each concept. Every one of these templates is intelligent enough that if you deploy them in your own scene already with assets, it creates the all the components needed to, to start working. Then we work on the content, how the content will look, how the content will be streamlined, what are the, 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 the best use cases for the technology, so each of these templates has a use case that we think of uh, would benefit the users. Then we end up working on arts, creating a, a cross template look and feel. So you know the templates you are working, you already know the components, you know the sizing and everything. Then we create the hub. The most important part for us is 
they used us to have a pretty good place to find the templates, look uh, the different examples that they are. It's also a place you could find uh, help. And that was the, the idea. And then after working hard, we have the template working. So you, you after you create a template with a single click, you can already build into iOS or Android. That part is outside of, of, of Unity itself, but you already have a working template. You already know that, but it was a process to find the, the, the core essence of, of each, each template up to the point to release the, the, the project. And then we got the launch. As Heli said, uh, we were in the summit. Uh, Heli presented us and the templates there. It was amazing to see the, the reaction of, of the audience there and how we, we, what we thought will help the, the users, the new, the welcoming users, how they, they could uh, tackle project without uh, knowing Unity at all. And uh, that was, was wonderful. And then obviously comes this, you know, the community events, the lens list competition, you are going through the 10 days of templates and we are very proud that the community is doing great with the templates, working hard. And for sure, there's more to come. So we will work on new templates, new features that uh, Laishi wants us to, to showcase. So we will have more, more to come. But let's start working with the, with the project itself. Okay. Um, the idea for today is to see, sorry, I see a comment in the chat. Let me see. Okay, then, then we can do a Q and A um, on questions, bring your question there and we can go through after we work on, on, the, on the example. For today, we want, uh, I want to work on how to go one step further with the templates. It might need some coding, it might need some knowledge from you. After the, the presentation, I will share a GitHub repository with a project itself so you can download it and start working on, on, on that. Okay, let me share screen. Again, full screen, okay, here. All right. Um, I have here a, um, a project. The idea is to, to create a, a template here, one of the templates. I, I love this one, uh, the real-time machine. The real-time machines allow you to create a, an object in space. It will take into account the surface you touch and Take it, uh, measure the angle the surface is and place an option there. So in, in this case, we have a mushroom that's working on the scene. We, we add Virtual Studio to be able to try this. Let me move. Okay, and then if we try it here, You already know this. Okay, let me fix something or <laughs> I spoil something from the project. <laughs> let me comment a few lines of code. Wait, let's start again. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So the, the template is uh, as here. You can touch a surface and get the, the object placed in the in the 3D wall using the normal from the surface uh, economy. So if I, if I touch the table, I will get objects there. If I touch the wall, it will be rotated. So this is a, a 
simple template, you already got that working. So as you know, for template, we want you to replace an object. So here I can, for example, create a 3D cube just uh, to, to go through the basics of the templates. I changed the sizing there. So when I start the pressure again, that object will be used instead of the one from, from the, the template. So here we have uh, our working template. I want to create something different, maybe something that's quite uh, uh, with with a different value from 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 this. Instead of a single object, the idea is to create a, a several objects in one click. The idea is to select randomly which objects I want to 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 instantiate here. So for that, we need to start thinking about the models first. So in this case, I create a model uh, of different time. Uh, kinds of plants. So we have here different models, um, we have like six of them. So each of them have uh, the same palette of the elements in, in Lightship ecosystem. And we have one single texture for, for everyone. So here we have a texture of, uh, and we use that for every object in here. So the idea is to export them as a FBX. So we select that, export that XBF, and we create the file on our desktop. So here we have. Then going back to Unity, we can import that object. Let me import that. And we have our, our plants here. So we have this one, this one, and every plant. The idea is how we can control and create different objects uh, from this one inside the, the, the the one in the, in, the, in the template. The idea is to not add the, not add in the objects as is. We want to create a, an empty object here and maybe name it plant 01. So this object will be our first one. We have a mesh filter here. Mesh filters allow us to select a mesh from the object uh, library. And we want to select plant one, for example. So this now has a mesh of the of the original model we created. Now we add a mesh render. And that now renders our ocean. So we have one of the plants there. Okay. Um let's rotate that. Obvious, uh, always Blender brings things rotated. <laughs> but we have our plan there. So right now we want to create also the material. We want to create a new material, plant mat, and we want to add the texture. Let's use this texture. There we have, and use the texture in our material. So right now apply the material and we have our plant there using um, the, the material we, we create. The idea here is how we can make this cube to be this object. The first thing we can do is add the plant there, remove the cube. And if we press play, we can see that we have the same result. The plant is growing there. 
So we, we have a forest and we already achieved something there. So, but how we create several of these plants? First of all, uh, I love to use prefabs. Uh, prefabs uh, uh, give you the opportunity to instantiate several objects uh, over time. So for this, you can create a prefab here by doing click, right click and create prefab, or you can simply create an object in the scene and drag it to the asset folder. So here I have a prefab, this object could be instantiated several times and it, it always be the same. We can change like already have several here. So let's remove that. And we want to use that to create our forest. For, for this matter, we create a, an empty object here and we go, mm, we, we, we will name this as a seed because when we create the object, it won't be the plant, it will be the seed, then the plant will grow up from there. That's just a name. Uh, this object will be empty. We don't want to, to have all the objects inside here and just hide them because it will create like seven objects every time I click. And by hiding, the, the process will get like, a, will struggle to keep up with the, all the objects in the scene. So here, the, the idea is to add a script. And let's name the script seed planter. We edit the script. Okay, there. And we will do basic stuff here, but I want you to follow up and remember you will have this code for you to use at the end of the, the workshop. The idea here is at the start of, of the, the function the function start is when the object enters to the scene. So every time I, I press on, on the scene to create a new object, that function will be called on each of the seeds we plant. So here we can create a, a, a variable, for, for example, yeah, no. oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. So every time I press on the scene, let's try this. I will get a message here. Let's clear the scene. Start a plan, start a plan, start a plan. Every time I click, I get that, that message. So now we want to import several objects. So we create a game object array. When we add this, we want a group of game objects that is a plant. And if we make it public, it will show up on the inspector. So now this object here, the seed has the script and now the script has a plant we can add there. So we can create several and we can add them from, from here. Okay. This panel. So we can add several of them here. I already have ones from a, a work I did earlier. So I have seven different plants. You can see them here. Are, are all of them come through the same process of 
create in upper file. So here we are the first one, we have the second one, and so on. Let's add only four. Just to start. So we have a group of plants here that we can use in the project. Right now it's doing nothing, just we have a list of plants and we have our seed option. So let's go back to the scripting and we can use the method and we will create a game object, plant, and we can use the method instantiate plants, for example, plants, oh. So in this case, we will create a new plant from the ones we have here in the in the object parameters. So in this case, we will use the first one, the zero one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> They are being created outside the, the, the screen because we need to add where we want the plant to be created. So we will create them in the game object itself. So in the seed object using game object transform. Right now it should work. So we are having already plants, but it's always the same. So we are using the same plant over and over. It will use the angle of the wall, angle of the ceiling, but it's always the same, same plants. So to choose random between all the plants we got in the, the object, we will create a new method no, get random plant. This method will return a random plant from the plants we have. So plants, we will return, sorry, from game object from here. We will return a game object of plants. So return a plant. And in this case, we will get um, a random range from zero to plants into length minus one. The idea here is as we got more plants, we have maybe four plants, we will select a random number from zero to the amount of plant we have, and that will be used to identify which plant we want to, to use. So let's do a, a, we want the number to be a, a, the lower of the, maybe it's o, o, a 0 0.1, we want to get the zero number. That is just that. And this function right now is getting us a random plant. So if we switch with this part, every time we instance CH a plant, we get a random one. Let's try that on the project. Let's start again. Oh, computer errors. <laughs> Give me one second. Math is like that. Sorry. Mm. Yes. From this, oh, well, we have a problem using random. We need to add this to use random in our project. T engine 
run. So with this, it will be fixed. And range needs to be cut. Mm. So small, right? We need to add, use float there and int here to me. That Unity has that problems with data types, but it's just a matter of being precise. So right now we should uh, get different plants every time we click on the on the space. We are only using four of them, so we can keep adding more plants. Let's add five. six and seven. And now we have a forest that has its own shape and form. Okay. I don't know if, if you have any question up to now. We could, sorry, we could go into deep of what we have done up till now. We created a, a plant array where we set several plants there. We create a get random plant me method where we find a different plant each time. And um, at the beginning of the running code on, on the project, uh, on the, sorry, on the object itself, we create one inside. So I will then you follow up on the, follow the code. Let's do this. Let's leave the code there and try to play around with, with the scene a little bit here. I have a quick question. It's just like related sure. with what Elias was saying and is that we don't have to create anything like on Tausch, something happens because it's already done. Yes, we, okay. we, you, it's already, the, the, the template already has the touch events there. So uh, right now, af, after this part, we will hack the template, enter the code of the template and try to change something. Uh, so we yeah. can create several in one click. So the idea is to, to go one step further and start playing around with, with the template code. Oh, that's great because I want to create something where many bubbles are generated randomly. And also randomly, they are gonna display a message or a sound. So I wanted to know how to do that, but I guess this is helpful. Thank you. Yes. So if you, you can, you, yeah, let me, let me know a little bit later how to do that. I would appreciate that. Thank you. We, we have two, two different approaches. In this mm -hmm. case, we can create several of them here. So we can create several plants in one click. So we can keep adding this. And if yes. we create, the, the, like you can create maybe a particle system inside the, the start method and you will get a particle system every time you click, it will kill your phone. <laughs> the idea is uh, okay. <laughs> that, that it's, it's all. But in this case, let's create several plants and we will overwrite uh, the value because 
we don't want we don't need that but in this case if we press play it will be all crowded because all of them will be created in the same spot okay let me stop there let me check again so here several plants were created in one single click so you can see let's go near the they are all together in one single spot but we created several of them at the same time so if you if we inspect here the hierarchical uh, hierarchy uh, panel sorry we can see in the seed we have several plants there how okay. did you do that just the last step what did you change to create many as as you mentioned many we 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 keep uh, calling the instantiate uh, method the instantiate ah, creates a new object of the scene right now if we do this we can we can see that it will be created one single time let me check and I have a, a scene already finished, but I want you to go through all the step with me. So yeah. it's, it's, it's nice. Santiago, it's more easy uh, to I, follow. I, I, That's so great. Thank well, you for teaching me that. Thank you. Uh, Go ahead, Elias, sorry. sorry. Yeah, no, um, you see where you have the get random plants, the method that's called, would it work with just having void? I see you have game object there. Would that have worked if you had void and without the return? Uh, the problem is that this method, uh, it's not a problem, this method will return the object to this function. So when we call, we use the return here. So we need a plan, we need a model here to, the model goes here to create a new model. The, this function needs a model to create and where to create. And in this case, we, this function, what, what it does is give us a model and we use that here. We could do that, like for example, game object model to be more well, uh, equals to get random plant. And then here we can put model. So we instantiate the model and then where it needs to be. That, that's the idea. If we don't, don't return nothing, it won't be created because here we don't won't have the model that's that's a, the problem there we could also put sorry yeah no i'm just wondering if you change the syntax there and did void get random object and then do random range and then do the you know with the selection of the object i'm just i guess the underlying question if i would have done the void and then done the recent tax of that language would it still work i'm not sure what what um the templates if, I'm not I'm where I'm, I don't know if I could if I could create it um, leverage you know the void and pulling the random object in standard unity script I don't know if there's going to be conflicts with the templates and that's kind of my my question so if it works in no. unity this is, yeah. yes the, the, the templates are in unity so everything you do in unity you could do on templates so in this case all this code is unity code so you won't have any problem but if you leave void here this won't return anything, so you won't get a return object here. You could use this here and it will, will be the same. It's just for uh, sake of clarity that we end up creating methods or, or, or like we can go deeper and get this inside this, uh, but then, then whoever go, goes to a to the code later won't understand what you are doing so the idea is to have like a clarity or uh, readable code for everyone to 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 get so that's a, that's mostly the idea here that makes sense yeah and one you, quick if, question if sorry sure. um because i'm new a little bit with coding why game object that transform is to actually get the position that instead of something like game object that uh, position you know like just in, terms uh, in of this coding. case we are yeah. we're, let, let's talk about instantiate it's, it's a good method to start talking instantiate and i, I think this this work better for the workshop so keep 
coming with questions. It's great to, to keep this rolling. Uh, so essential work with two two variables at minimum. One is the mo the model. The, the minimum you need is the model. So what you want to create. So yeah. what you want to instantiate. It could be a, an object from scene. It could be an object from asset folder. It could be anything you 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 want. So then you need to. There is a lot of uh, ways to call this function, but the what we use the minimum the very minimum is who is the parent of the of the object you you are creating. So in this case, we are creating a model and say saying that the parent is the one we replace on the template. So let's go back to to the scene. And in this case, let's stop. We want the object to be created uh -huh. inside here. That's why okay. if if we can, if we see right now, let's do that again. Let's play the code. And you, you can see the templates allow you to set an object here is for ease of use. But once you start the code, the object here got hidden. So it won't be used on the scene. This object will be instantiated with the same function we are using right now every time you click. So if I click here, an object, an object holder was created. It's a clone of the original. And if you see, we have the seed. We have the same structure as the previous one. And inside the seed, we have our plants. So that's mostly what we are doing in the code, creating a new object from a random set of uh, objects and then create the uh, setting up the parent object we want to, to get. We have several other ways of doing that. We can set up the position and everything around that. And in the case, for example, that you want to, let's start thinking of one of the examples, for example, um, let's work on three plants. We want to create three plants, but the uh, plant two, plant two, uh, plant one. Okay, we miss one here. <laughs> so plant two, tra transform position X. Let's do this first. So right now we are creating a new plant. Let's go again in the, the code. We are creating a plant. We are creating another one with the same model because we get a random model and use both time in the same code. And we want to move that plant 10 units to, let's use a smaller number because it will be quite big. So let's start again. We should get, okay. We always get errors. <laughs> Transform position. Let me see. Plant motion transform. Let's see. Transform. Let's see here. This is we can no. Okay, sorry. Set. Well, we always end up uh, search searching in, in Unity code. That's normal. <laughs> we don't know everything from, <laughs> let's use this syntax. We can add to the position a new position, new vector three, zero, zero, one. Let's do this. Now it should work. Okay. So encoding transform means means sort of like the position, like the random position. Is is it? The, um, is let's, let's talk about. Uh, let, me, let me show this, and I talk about the transform. So we mm -hmm. have two plants here. The transform Unity used a system of it's called a component system. So each object is uh, built from several components, and if you see here, you have the transform. The transform is the component 
that, that sets position, rotation, and scale from options. So when you are um, used, uh, using dot transform, you are accessing this module on, on the options. Okay. So if we, if, for example, let's talk about this seed. We can access transform or seed plan. There are different components on the same option. The camera, the camera also has a transform, has a camera, has an audio listener. So each component is accessible and you can modify its value. So that's why we use transform in some places and game object in others. Because the game object is the object itself and the transform is the component that set up the position, rotation, and scale. Okay, scale. okay. So, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that's the uh, but we already have different positions of land with a, with a single click. So here is like a more, uh, but it's quite weird, weird because uh, if we want to, if we click here, one plant might get outside of the table, like it's happening here. So it's not the best approach to, to create several plants without taking into account the surface or the meshing of the seam. So it works right now, but we will try to hack the templates. It's, not, it's a minor hack, but we, we want to change the, the, the behavior of, of the template. We could also uh, start moving the plants on the Y axis. So we can do something like this. And an example of bubbles, for example, could work to start creating the objects and start moving them upwards. So right now we change. We don't want to move the plant on the C axis. We want to move them on the Y. So there we can have like several the bubbles and with the, their own animation, one on top of, the, of each other. So the idea is we can play around with this. But let's keep this simple. We have this and it selects a different plant. Let's go hacking. <laughs> Let me see if everything is working. We always need to check. Right now we are getting like two times the plans. Let me check if that code. Let me touch. It's doing something different. Okay. Right now, we have this, this working. What we want to do is to go deeper in the templates code. And um, when I do a click here, we want to move our cursor a little bit and do another click on the on the side. And then move the, the cursor a little bit to the left and do another click. So the idea is to, with a single click, we can dispatch several, uh, collisions with the mesh and create one plant in, the, in every click, in every space there. So the idea here is to find where this could be done. And I want you to, to understand how the templates work a, li a little bit. So here on, on the scene, let's start creating a, a new scene. And let's go uh, again with the templates. Mesh. Let's go to the welcome window. That's wonderful. Uh, we are done meshing here. So here we have several objects that were created by the template factory. The first one is the AR mesh manager. That's for from Lightship itself. But here we have the AR controller, and it has several components uh, already applied like the mesh, the object holder controller, the mesh controller, and the mesh placement controller. We can go deeper in any of these codes and try to find that uh, what, what they do. Uh, you need to understand the code, follow up the, all the functions and understand. But we want to modify a little bit the placement controller. So if we click here, we go, could go to the template, a mesh controller 
I already did some some changes here. Basically, the the code or the original code was like this. So let's see this. Right. So here we have our mesh placement controller. So it will check on every frame if you are, have done uh, a touch event on the screen, it will get the current touch position and will create a right cast. Basically all touch positions in, in 3D space are done by right cast. We throw a ray from the camera onto the surface and see where the, that ray collision, that's where we touch. So the idea is, it, here is not to understand uh, every aspect of the code, it's just to give you an idea that, that you can modify the template. They are not written in stone, you can play around if you have the knowledge, maybe a colleague that can help you out. You can create stuff from this template itself, modify them and, and add them new, new content. So here it's working great, but we are doing a single collision so here, for example, we do a right cast with the wall. We once we find the heat, where we hit the surface, we are doing the same. Instantiate the object uh, and doing uh, other other stuff here, like the set the position, uh, the scale. Uh, we do some uh, calculations to calculate the normal, the, the let's say the the line that goes upwards from the surface. So we can rotate the model to be aligned with the surface. That's all along here. But we want to do this several times on a single click. So when I click on one one place, we get several touch, several plants out at once. So for that, we want to reuse this code. The idea is this part could be reused several times and maybe uh, done like, let's say three times in a row. So for that, we need to create a function. Let's do, let's create a function. Maybe we are missing a bracket. So let's do a function here. Let's do a void. Right now we don't need a return. So that's why we use void. It will be empty. We won't return anything. So we do do touch event. Let's call that the, the function right now. So we want all this to be inside the function itself. So every time we do a touch event, we call this. In this case, we can do touch event. But it's not so easy. We need one thing, one more thing there. Yes. The idea is we have we have touch position. If we save this, it will say that touch position is in the other function, not in this one. So we won't have that that value present in this function. So we will receive like a vector two and we say we call it position. Oh, sorry, typo. And here we can pass touch position. So we are using touch position and passing it to the function itself. The type, the value of the, uh, the, the, the type of value we have there is vector two, and we are already working there. Let's say, let's see if that works. So right now, check. It should be the same result. So we have the same result. We we have gone back to the to the previous example. So it, the, the the template as it comes in in in, in Lightship, but then we get that working on the other thing we we got the earlier. So we create a single mushroom in in every click. 
But what we want to do is let's approach the table. What if I click here and we also dispatch another touch, let's say 100 pixels to the left. So if we want, we will get this. Once we touch here, we get two objects at, at the same time. So the idea here is since we can call that here, we can call it several times. So we can keep calling and we can dispatch several uh, touch events. But in this case, all be, will be in the same place. So let's add some you know, like store two. Uh, and we need to add a different value. Let's say let's 10 pixels to the left and 20 pixels upwards. So we save here. Let's play again. So right now, if I click, they are almost in the same place. So we need to use a bigger value. Let's use 100 and 200. Let's every time we need to restart and do a play again for, for, for the changes to take. So we are creating two at the same time. But if I click here, I will get one on the table and one on the on the wall because the previous one we create the two on a line, but in this case we are creating several events on the same in the same moments. So here, for example, we create there, there, they are far away. Let's do a smaller number. So we do this. So we have here a more friendly version. So in this case, we got one in on the on the table, one on under the chair. But I, if I click here, I should get one here and one on the chair. Ah, just under the, we hit under the, 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 the chair there. But that's the idea. We are using different touch. We are not creating new touch. With a single touch, we are dispatching two creations at the same time. So it's, it's not that we are creating, um, let's say, a false touch on the, on the scene. We are just dispatching two, two models creation there. So that's mostly how you, how you can hack the, the, the templates. You can enter the code, find how they, 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 they move, how they act, and, and change that. For example, we we can also go to option animation. Each of the objects has its own animation. So here, for example, we, we have motion animation. We can go inside motion animation and change some of the values here, the amount of time it takes to animate. Maybe we want the speed to be faster, or maybe we want to set the off offset a little bit, we can modify that. It's not a original song, you can play around with that. So I don't know if you have any question up to here. Okay, we keep going. The, uh, right now, I, 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 uh, one question, sorry. Um, so let's say we have the mushroom spawned already, right? They're on the screen. How would we do like um, to destroy them or set them false? Is it similar? I saw there was a object dot set active, but if we wanted to do where our fingers touch on the screen, do we do object then set active false if we're going through pooling or destroy a game object? And right now the template doesn't have pooling, but you can implement your own, you need to, take uh, in, in, into account uh, how they, they, they are created, but you 
can um, this let me see here placement here you can create like your own array of objects and reuse them or maybe if you touch you, you need to have a, like let's say um a structure of data where you know where you click or or if you click an object you set them uh, false so it might be not in this code but in the mushroom itself you could have a code that if you interact with the mushroom maybe you set them to false uh, we have some templates around that. Uh, that's this template. Let me, well, let's say this platform. No, sorry. <laughs> let's create a new 16. Yes, I know why it's asking where to put the thing. Let's create a new template here. We have one that is object interaction. Uh, let me see this one. Oh, let's it's share object interaction. We had one template that you can interact and re-interact with an object. It might be that we need to release that. <laughs> Sorry. But the, the idea is that once you, you touch an object, you can add a script to the object itself to detect when you re-interact with, with, with that. I know if that answered your question. Yeah, I think so. I'll, uh, uh, yeah, so I would still use the touch, um, the touch screen, I think was a command. And so I would just need to then um, execute the code that I want, uh, the, uh, the interaction I want to happen. So I, I think I got it. Yes. Um, it's about giving it a try first, All right, thanks. Yeah, yes, we, we uh, the idea is you, you need to like think of, on, on the template as, as a macro of what you are doing and then in, in the object itself, you have a micro of, of what you are doing. Like if you are interacting with an object, maybe you need to, uh, you, you have then the racing condition, maybe if you touch the screen, what is triggered before. The, 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 the machine itself or, or the object itself. So yeah, that that you need to take into account when, when you are building a more complex project. So, but that's uh, like a next level. We want you to discover what that and, and uh, we will be great grateful if, if you write on, on Discord to us and we help you help you there. Okay, let's let's go to to the the final idea on this template, and and that's mostly because each idea needs its own code. So that's mostly we don't have a solution for for everyone. So that we need to think about what you are trying to do, and and we can help you out. That mostly while while the struggle to find the the, the right, right answer. Every way of doing it is, is good. It's just a matter of seeing how to, to approach that. But let's let's do here, let's see. We had our template here. That's, uh, this is the one with the monochromes. So we, we got two at the same time. And now I want to go a little back with the code. I had it already implemented. It's very similar to what we have done. Let's see this story. So the idea here is, is the same uh, uh, what we do previously, but we change the name to create elements. It's just that, and we pass the position as we did earlier. But here, before setting up the position to the screen point to right, we add some random value. So when we touch the screen, it might be a little to the left, a little to the right, top, bottom. It's, it won't be precise where I'm touching. And it might be sounds crazy, but it's, the idea is to have 
something that is more natural uh, of that as they are plants, we want them to grow in different places. So if we save this code, you will see that, sorry, let's go back to Unity. So here, if, I, if I press, it will it get a little bit back to, to the back and, and to the right. But if, if I press on the same spot again, it will it will be on a different place. And if I press again, it, and if I keep pressing, it will create a, like a natural growth of plants around a, a single spot. So if I keep doing that on a single spot, it will create random set of of plants. So instead of doing several clicks, I can run this several times. So the idea is I can do like this. And I will create, in this case, seven plants each time. And you will see that it feels like we are creating a patch of plants there, or, or, or mushrooms in this case. So we have a different. And what's nice here, it feels great, but if you go next to objects that like have some corners or something, oh, let's see oh, the camera turn. If I click here, for example, I will get objects all around on the back, on the front. Uh, if I go here, like in the chair, I will get objects for everywhere. If I go here, it's like they grow in patches. So that's nice, it's, it's great. We can also, Okay, we can have this and it's almost always the same patch because we we are randomly selecting but on the same position. So we have a, let's say a, a range of action. But then I thought, what if we also add some randomness to, let, let, no, no a randomness, sorry. What if we, the first touch is in the middle but the other ones are in the corners. So we are not getting a single point every time, we are getting like a point and then a square around. So the idea of this code is that, is we modify the position, the touch position, by a certain distance on four corners around the touch. So in this case, we will get a different shape every time because we will get a random value on that four corners and in the middle. In the middle. So let's see. Like here, when we click, we get random there, random there, and it's more natural feeling of how you can grow your own garden. <laughs> so for me, this is like great to, to play around. And, and I think this kind of project gives us our uh, users uh, the sense of discovery, creation, you know, and it's, it's nice. So we have this working, maybe let's save that and go to the thing we got earlier. So you have C, great. So you play here. And if we press, we start growing the garden. And it's, it's looking great. So I have the finished scene. It's almost the same. It doesn't have any any difference at all. But let's, let's do like that. And it is the same as we created earlier. So we have that working. And I want to show you, let me see if I can show you. Give me one second because I have a working project here on my phone. Let me see. So this is my phone here. There you are. And then I can start creating plants all over this room. 
you can create stuff behind the chairs and it's an amazing feeling so that's that's the idea that's the idea to hack uh, a template to create more than the template and uh, give you the, the power of uh, and that's that's the, the, the idea we can also talk a, lot, a little bit about other stuff that were done on the templates for example we have created some shaders for the template for the plants so in this case this is just for you to use and uh, we have some shader for the plants that uh, renders the texture without any so it's, it's performant without any lighting it's a, like uh, shadeless and then we have a shallow color it's a, a shader that if we see a plant from the peripherals you can see we have let's go to the scene let's go to the plant so we have the plant and the shadow they are almost the same model we they only differ on which material they, they have so let's go inside the prefile and here we have the plant that's always let me zoom it that way and then we have the shadow the shadow is the same model the only thing uh, we have different is that it uses a shader that flattens the model to the, to the surface so we don't need to change uh, anything on on the plant itself if we move both plants or or maybe rotate them we don't need to take into account the, the, the rotation or anything it's just the same model with a shader that flattens the the, the plant is mostly on early game engines was the way to create shadows for for characters it was the same model flattened on the surface and it's cheaper than having real shadow or, or, or lighting calculations so i don't know if if you have any questions uh, if you want to start doing a q a something on that end maybe you don't need ideas and we can start talking about how to implement maybe do some example here Okay, we can go uh, on doing some other stuff with the with the plants. Let let's say let's see Elias uh, share a code. Let let's let's try to do one uh, trigger event on a on an object after created. Let's do that together. Victor Kappa, uh, share a code. Let's let's you use your code, Victor, so everyone can can see that's working. Let's create a new scene. Um, let's go with a basic uh, example, the object placement. So we want here we have a, our gift box. Let's do a play here. We have a, our gift box. So if we press, we create the gift box on different places. So let's add the the code that uh, Victor created. So here we can create a component. We add a script to to the object itself. So let's call it um, on touch or touch gift sorry gift let's uh, start coding let me find where here it is so we got some code from victor let's copy and paste that into our oh sorry Paste. 
I hate comments. Uh, I'm from us. So yes. So in this case, you want to remove an object. So you do screen point to array. You are using input mouse position. So in this case, this will will work on the on the desktop, but it won't work on on. I don't think it will it will work on 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 a mobile device. Uh, Niantic has its own system of interaction. Uh, you can see here that they use a pl platform agnostic input. So they create a system to get the input no matter what device you are running on. So I I suggest that you change that to, to that input. So in this case, let's uh, Elias, let's go, go change that to, to use the, the the other the other input. So it for for to use the platform and not the input, we need to import the this this system. When you import using the word using um you you, you are like loading those classes to the code. So we are going to copy this and get to the touch gift class so right now we can use that because it's load, loaded and then go again sorry i lost uh, this part so in this case we can copy this part so Yes, yeah, and we will go through each of the steps here. So, pl platform analysis input has a count of touch. Um, yes, that's a le le sorry, Elias. It's a, that's the legacy way they, they change on version 2.0 to legacy. It might come up a new system, it might be a, a already around. A new one, the template where were being worked on the 1.2 and 1.3 of the Nashi uh, code, and the release was up to late, late on the development process. So we will update this on the next couple of weeks. We are doing a plan with Heli and uh, Amanda to update this to the better code. Uh, uh, so that's that's a, that's the idea. So first we count if the touch are more than zero. If there are, are not any touch, we will get the, a zero. So we skip any uh, uh, calculation after that. So that's why we have a return here. If we got no touch at all, skip all the code after that. Then we get the touch itself with the, the next function, like from flag, sorry platform agnostic input get touch zero and we get that value and that give you give us a lot of information for example in which phase we are we can do a touch phase we can do um, um the touch phase sorry we can have begin begun we can have ended we can have a lot of different touch events so when we press at the start of pressing at the end, when you release the, the finger, so you can create a lot of stuff. For example, I start pressing, then I move, then I release. I can create all these triggers uh, uh, on all, all, the, all the code. So then if we got that, we want to do it when we began touching, we then, Encapsulate that in, in that if um, we change, we simply change this to touch position. So the code is not that different. It's just a matter of adding the previous uh, lines of code. And um, in this in this case, we already got got that working. Then uh, you are checking if you if you have the button pressed down. In that in in, the, in that end, sorry, in that end. It will be better to check before calculating, uh, doing calculations. So we already get that uh, at the beginning. 
So we can remove that. And I think then we can have the right cast. If it has collider, collider uh, if you know the, the, the game object, you can destroy the, the game object. That's, that's the idea. Or let's do set active false. Let's try that on, on the scene. It might not work as always. The first time it doesn't work, but let's, let's try that. We might end up like right now, we create an object and if we touch again, the problem here might be that first we don't, we don't have colliders on the model. So to be, to be able to touch, we need some collider. So let's add a collider there. Box collider. We need to check the sizing of the collider. So in this case, the collider is the box that we use to write cast. And if we leave that, sorry. And Ah, let, let, we, we are do, like the object we, we create is the, this whole object. So we are get, creating a collider around the whole gift package, the box and also the cover. So we are doing that in the parent for, for that matter. We could do, do that on different parts, but it's better to have a simple collider. In this case, the collider is, is wrong because it's bigger than the box itself. So if I press here, I will get a collision even uh, if I'm outside of the box because it's uh, bigger than, than the box itself. So we will try to uh, edit the collider. Let's get that working. Let's go to a different point of view and try to make that, uh, let's go away. Let's do that by, by eye. I, I, I hate that. I would like to do that precisely, but for sake of time, let's do that. Okay, great. So we have here our box with a collider. We are, we have more room there. So right now let's do play. And if we touch here, we create a box. Here we create a box. And if we touch again, it got hidden. But as we are not uh, creating a new box every time, when we hit up a box, we, we, we need to show it again when we click on the scene. So, that's that's uh, a problem there. But as you can see here in the controller, we have multiple instances. So if you check on the template in the AR controller here, you can create multiple multiple instances of the object. So in this case, for example, we will get the object. And then if we click, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see uh, something got maybe maybe it's not compact. <laughs> that's that's a live coding problem. <laughs> let's let's see. Uh, uh, let's go back to a single object. And I want to change the behavior. Maybe instead of hiding the object itself, maybe we kind of play around and do another concept of, on on this box. Maybe once you click you open the box. So let's do another, think out this together. To, to do that, maybe we need to move the, this box and rotate the box. So if we rotate the box uh, as it is, we might, uh, let's rotate the box, the, the, the top part, let's do that. It will rotate in a, uh, in a different, um in a different angle so we want to to create a, a different pivot point so we can do there are a lot of things we can do to achieve that uh but i love to create an empty object place that object 
where I want to rotate. So for example, I want to, the box to rotate in this point and then make the cover child of that object. So when I rotate this one, the child objects will follow, follow it. So the idea is like how this kind of movement. So it's a simple trick, creating a parent and working with the parent without uh, the, the child uh, working there. So we have here, we have a rotation zero value. Here we can play with values, see how far we want to open 30 degrees. We might end up going 60 degrees. 70 degrees, let's, let's do 70 degrees. So when it's closed, it will, will be zero. When it's open, it will be minus 70. So that's the idea, let's go with that. Uh, and Elias, if we are working on a, a standardized UI throughout the templates. We are trying to, to find uh, on the new templates, the uh, space to, to, to create that and create components around that for sure. There's uh, something to work on that. Um, so we let's name that uh, rota rotation point. So here we have our rotation point. Uh, we want to rotate on the X axis. So let's go back to code. Every time we click, we need to go to one side of, of the rotation or the other. So for that, let's first find uh, how to, to find that object. So the code is inside replace me. So let's rename amazing gift. So we are having our script added here, touch gift. And we need to find rotation point. There's two ways we can find it by code, but I love to create some variables here, another game public game object variable. And then we, uh, we'll Part. So we can like assign that ourselves. That's why if we get finding objects on, on the scene is not as performant because it, it needs to look up for the object in the scene. But um, I, I, there's uh, several ways to do that. I love this uh, just to, to put this here. So we have our, our rotation point there. Uh, when we click, we need to know if we already open or close. So let's create a variable there, it's Boolean. I think it's bool and open. Let's say the first time it's closed, so it's false. So every time I click on the object, we need to change the open to the different value. So for example, if it is true, we said false. If, if it is false, we said true. Basically, it's the opposite of what we get earlier. So in this case, we can do the opposite of what we have in, in, in the code. So if open is true, this will set to false, so open will be false. So we are negating the, the original value. So right now we have a value that switch from true to false, and we can do a, if open rotation point transform dot rotation equals to quaternions uh, create from Euler. Let's, let's go back to code and let's see Euler. Qua Euler angle, quaternions are on radians, so they are values uh, ranging uh, on, in relation with pi, they are uh, radians, but with Euler we can use our own like radians. Uh, uh, 
grads um, like 90 degrees. Sorry, my, my Spanish is getting is kicking in. Um, the degrees of 90 degrees, 180 degrees, more readable, more human values. So in this case, using quaternion Euler, we can set up the because in the other, uh, if we use radians, uh, in quaternions is more complicated than radians. Trust me. So in this case, if we have if it is open, we will set. 70 and if it's closed let's do one else we use zero in this case i think might be working on the first no oh we are having problem with numeric here numerics coming that i don't know what Adding numeric. Okay, so Unity is adding uh, main spaces randomly to the code. Let's do this. So here we have our object. If we touch, it will open. If we touch, it will close. You can see that we have some issues there. The problem is that we are touching the object, but also touching the ground. So we are also creating a new position for the object. So we are still getting the touch, the touch for both events at the same time. So that's problematic because we want to, if we touch the box, we want to avoid touching the ground. So that requires some, some uh, technical stuff there. But let's do something different. Let's move this code. Instead of having this here, we can have that on the code itself that creates objects. So we can go here, placement controller, for example, and maybe add that code here. So if we collide with a different object, we don't we don't do the, the the collision on the on the ground. So that's some we are going like a, a deeper level here of coding. So that's why we need to start going inside some of the templates and modifying some some stuff. So for example, here we can send a, a code to 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 the option itself, and then if that object created or 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 or, or already open or closed, we don't do the rest of, of the code here. So one thing to do that is maybe add here, public game object equals to gift, um, sorry, gift box equals to nothing. Let's do that. So let's see. Right now we are modifying the template. We are receiving a new parameter here. It's the gift box. So we can add the gift box here. And we can do here gift box punto get component. And the component is called like this. And we need to add the name of the the script here touch gift so here we will receive the the touch gift component from the gift box let's let's save that and um, maybe we can do is just comment this part and do a, a quick test uh, let's text function void test Depot dot node dot view so every time we touch we can see the code there so here no so let's close the others let's another layer so here we can call test function. 
we will see that we will get the uh, well, obviously problem with it's my visual code that is adding many spaces. I don't know why today is kind of crazy. Um, it says that it's not accessible because it's protected. So because to be able to communicate with other classes, we need to do a public function. So right now, let's speed up to finish the workshop with this done. Let's try to make it happen. So let's go to the console, we are this, and every time we touch, touch is freer. So in this case, let's change. We don't want to check every time if we touch that, uh, the box, because, because that we are already doing here. We're already uh, going through that inside here. So we don't need the, the update method. We can create a, um, here, sorry. Um, the let's say interact with box. So let's copy this code inside here and let's comment. So we don't need the, the to calculate the the touch event, or even if the touch started, because that's uh, handled outside of the code itself. So right now we only need the position and see if we hit the, the object. So let's get vector two, position, and this position. Uh, just keep adding that. So in this case, we will get the position. We need to get the position. So let's put interact with box and let's send the position that is top position. So here we have that working right now. That should work. We sh should be able to interact, but the problem persists. Because we didn't handle if we already touched the box to avoid doing the rest. So for that, we need to send a, a, the last, a last value from, from here. That's, let's create wool interacted. Pause. So we want to return interacted from the value here. We need to set that also here that we are returning a Boolean. But if we interact with the object, we need to change that to interacted true. So if we interact with the object, we set that to true and then return its value. And here, we can say if the position, let's, let's add a variable to be more clear, interacting. Have that, and if interacted, right on. We, we uh, go out of the function itself if we already interacted with the box. So right now we should have that version cover, that problems uh, cover, sorry. Um, let's see, we create the box, we touch the box, and then we, oh, okay, the problem is in other places, but we are not creating several touch on, on, we are using a single touch event to handle both. The problem with the rotation is that we are setting up uh, the rotation on the local, we need to set the local rotation. Local rotation, let's search for that. 
transform local rotation. So we are doing rotation locally and not in, in the world. So let's do local rotation. Let's see. So we have no problem there. We can add some animation if you want. We can see how to animate that by code. It's just, uh, and, and if we move the box already open, it will, remain open we we are seeing that the box rotates on on its own so it's not that the code rotates is the, the the mesh placement rotates the, the object but you can close and open the box there uh but let's add an animation it's quite easy it's just uh do do another step but let me see we can do let's in, instead of setting up the rotation of the ocean itself. Let's save that rotation. Three. No, sorry. Quaternion. It's a quaternion. Quaternion. Final rotation. So well, let's save that to this. And then We can final set final rotation to this value. And then here on the date, because we are doing that only when we click on the screen, we need to animate on the date because the ocean needs to change every frame that, that value. So in this case, we can rotation point transform local rotation equals to quaternion. Sorry, quaternion uh, punto lerp. Lerp is a function that creates an animation between two values. So we can have the first value that is here and the final rotation. And we need a, a, a the final the final parameter is the the speed you want to go through them. So this, in this case, is 0.5. Let's do that. I see your question, Elias. I, I, you you should be having these files by the end of the, the session. Let's let's do that happen. Make that happen. So right now we did that. Actually, we have problem with my. Be sure to your go. <laughs> let's, let's try. So we have an animation by code added in one single line of code. Let's see if that works. So it's doing working nicely, and we can set uh, the speed here we can get the more if the lower the number the slower the animation the smaller the number should, should be. <laughs> so we went through a lot of things in this workshop we create a different approach on the template itself we hack some of the coding we create a you know, logic on top of the template and also hack again the code of the template and um, i think this is nice to to you to start playing around we love what would the templates do but we want you to go one step further and try to find new new ways of working with the templates um, becoming maybe a programmer, a coder throughout the process. Uh, the idea is uh, that they are playful, the code is open, you can play around, copy paste, and they are not uh, uh, 
a unit closed and you, you can't open and we want you to play with them, you might find that something could be better. And we love to hear that from you and, and find a, a better for, solution for next time. So I don't know if, if you have any question, I, I, I think, or maybe some, some comments. Great, Diana. Nice to hear. Um, that was awesome. Yeah, thank you. That, that's very practical. Thank you. That was a great, great session. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, the, the idea wasn't to go so deeper, so it's nice to, that we get up speed and, and 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 we can do a two two projects in a single session. Uh, I think. Uh, the code will be released by a couple of hours. I need to deploy that on GitHub and you can access the whole code. Also, this, this example about the box uh, will also be added to that code. So something that we did together will be there. And also the models of the plants, you can play around, use on your own project, it's not a problem. We think that it will be part of the package on the next on the next uh, templates, so feel free to use that and, and play around. I, I think the link will be posted on, uh, I, I will send them on the Discord channel. Let me figure out, if maybe there's some part that are not final here, clean up some comments or, or something, and then deploy that on, on GitHub and put a, on the Lightship uh, challenge channel. Uh, but then I will send it to Haley also, but to, to reach you in other ways we, we can. Yeah, I think I can actually follow up with everyone who RSVP'd um, through the events uh, page that we have. Um, so yeah, Discord is a great place to go. And then whatever you send me, Santi, I'll forward on to everyone who RSVP'd. Oh, thanks so much. Great, great. Yeah, I wanted to say thank you so much. It was so great. Um, I really appreciate all your time and actually all the work creating the templates. Now it makes more sense. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We 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 work on 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 creating them as we we struggle at the beginning with Lightship. Also, it's a learning path. Um, we took that as a way of thinking how to approach new users. So the idea is to, 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 we build our own, what we want to get on, on that. And we align with Hali on what was the vision of the template. And um, we, I think we, we, we create something that's doing great. And seeing the community that is working on that and trying to find new ways to play around with them is amazing. Thank you so very, much. Very proud of the project. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Santi. Thank you, Victor, and everybody who's on the call today for your engagement. Um, really great to see y'all working together. And um, tomorrow we've got office hours. Uh, so if you're continuing to build, if you're getting stuck, uh, we will have office hours tomorrow. So stop on by. And then we've got a couple quick events this weekend as well um, to just touch base with each other. But it's good to see everybody. Sibele, I see you there. It's good to see you. <laughs> Um, and I, I to I, see you too. <laughs> I'm here in my vacation, like <laughs> <laughs> uh, vacation with Lightship. Um, thank you so much to everybody, and thank you again to the Electric Factory, to Santi. Um, we've been so so happy to work with y'all, and you're helping our community get up and running. So we deeply appreciate that. All right, y'all. I will catch you all later. Can we get Bye. a photo? Yeah, let's get a photo. <laughs> Yes, those moments are, are super exciting when we remember them. So at one. I'm gonna, no, no, you got to do the mm -hmm. countdown. As I was I'm going to try not to look like an Ewok. Okay. Everybody ready? Ready. One, two, yep. three. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is done. It's good. It's good. Everything is good. <laughs> Thank you, Diana. Thank you so much. I'll be posting right. it there in the Discord. Mm -hmm.
All right. I'll catch y'all later. Yep. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs>